Williams, former White House press secretary and America First Action senior advisor and spokesperson Sean Spicer. Sean, it's good to see you. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. And I guess the conversation has to include the question of if the economy is all that strong, why do we need a full point cut in rates? Well, I, I think, look, um, obviously over time, the market grows and recedes. The goal of the administration, especially this one, is to make sure that they're putting uh, policies in place that keep it growing. You know, Kellyanne noted in that clip that you played that we have more people working than ever before, that we continue to exceed expectations in so many areas of the economy. I think it's the job of, of the administration, the president, to make sure that the policies that got us here continue. And so if that means additional uh, rate cuts or quantitative, quantitative easing or tax cuts, regulatory cuts, all of those things that, you know, it's like any other thing in life. Once you get it going, you got to keep it moving. And I think the, the administration, rightly so, is examining the options to bring to the president that will uh, continue the momentum that we've seen in the economy. Yeah, no, I understand that, but but, but there's a big difference between a quarter point and a full point. That's all, that's all I'm saying, Tom. Hey, Sean, About this three is quarters of a point, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sean, this is Tom Bevan. Uh, following on that, does that you know Democrats are out there talking down the economy, and and certainly this last round of recession right. talk they've they've really attached to, and, and the question being with President Trump continuing to ask for for you know rate cuts and more stimulus, uh, does that play into the Democrats' argument that, hey, this economy isn't as good as people think it is, there's a lot of anxiety out there, and, and the president is acknowledging that by trying to continue to pump the economy? Yeah, I think, Tom, you're touching on something that is actually really, really important. I've said this over and over again. When it comes to the economy and voting, which is what, you know, really what we're getting down to here in terms of the next election. I've always believed that while the economy is the number one issue, it's a gut feeling. People have to feel like the economy is improving or not improving uh, or, or feel like it's, it's not going in the right direction. Are you putting more money away? Are you saving for that vacation? Did you buy the extra, you know, the blender or the appliance, the TV? Uh, and, and that is largely a gut feeling. Do you feel secure in where the economy is heading right now? And so you've got the president that wants to make sure people understand, A, it's going well, and B, I'm going to continue to do what I can to keep it going there. And then Democrats. <laughs> Democrats. Unfortunately, I think the way that they win is they understand a good economy benefits the president. So what you want is to create uncertainty, not just in the markets, but in people's gut feeling. They want people to not think that the president's policies are working. They want to cast uncertainty over what people feel about the economy and job growth. So this really comes down to less about results than how people are going to feel come August or so of next year yeah. heading into that final stretch. Hmm. Sean, Jonas Ferris, you know the president obviously better than we do. And uh, there's something about this whole payroll tax cut and the Fed badgering. And I'm curious, obviously we just heard a lot of presidents want rates to be lower before an election. But do you think this president's taking it a little more aggressive to the point where, like, he would like to get the Fed to lower rates, possibly making the economy look weak with a trade war. And then he's got a whole plan of things like maybe a payroll tax cut and other things that are more fiscal, that if he did before the Fed lowered rates, the Fed wouldn't lower rates. And it's, it's a little bit of a, uh, he's gaming it to some extent on some level. I'm not saying it's a bad strategy, but do you think that could be going, this was a leak, this whole payroll tax thing? He doesn't want that out there. I think that's a very interesting strategy. I don't know. I think that I will say that if you go back just through the tweets alone, you'll see that his strategy in terms of going after the Fed and Fed policy and rate cuts has been fairly consistent for years. So this isn't sort of I, I get your point. Maybe you don't want them to think if an actual policy is going to create the same result. You don't want to get ahead of, of possible uh, you know, cuts in the in the rate. Yeah. Uh, it was it's actually, I think, a fascinating strategy yeah, to I, examine, I think. But if you go back consistently, you, you'll see the the president has been very consistent about wanting rate cuts. I, I think, and I will say lastly, this goes back to the point I was making to Tom, which is what the president is doing is making sure that everybody in the country understands that he's doing his job, he right. wants them to do their job, well, that as they president. think about the totally. economy. And, and we know he's looking at the market. Well, but and it's also making sure that people. I, I got to switch gears, Sean. I got to ask you about Elon Omar and Rashida yep. Tlaib. They're blasting Israel, of course. They did a news yep. conference yesterday, slamming the country, saying that it is not acting as an ally. Watch this. 
Netanyahu's decision to deny us entry might be unprecedented for members of Congress, but it is the policy of his government when it comes to Palestinians. This is the policy of his government when it comes to anyone who holds views that threaten the occupation. It is unfortunate that Prime Minister Netanyahu has apparently taken a page out of Trump's book and even direction from Trump to deny this opportunity. And all of us should be deeply disturbed. All of us Americans should be deeply disturbed. So what's your reaction to all of this? It's kind of bewildering that they've escalated this, right? Because Prime Minister Netanyahu, frankly, any leader of any organization or country, their job is to protect their people and to look after the interests of the country or the organization they represent. In this case, you have two women backed by a group uh, that has a very, at best, dubious record when it comes to the security of Israel and that are funding a trip for these guys to go. And the prime minister and other leaders in the country are rightly making sure that, that, that they don't come to uh, create an, a, a circumstances in the country that would undermine the security of Israel. They had an opportunity through the APAC trip that was just weeks ago to join a bipartisan delegation and go. I don't think it would have been a problem there. Prime Minister Netanyahu allowed, created a visa uh, for her to go visit her grandmother. She turned that down. There's something clearly here that she wants to do that would go after the interests of Israel. And so if that's the case, then the prime minister and any other leader has a right to protect the interests of their people. They also want to vote for the, you know, economic boycott of Israel. <laughs> we know that already. I mean, there's that. Right. I mean, look, I think, but Maria, the thing that I find Real so quick, fascinating Sean. isn't just the back and forth between them, that, that you have a Democratic Party that is silent on this, in fact, probably supportive of them, a party that is largely has a huge base of Israel supporters in the United States up until this election. I think that this is a real opportunity for the Republicans and for President Trump to go really at the heart of the Jewish American vote and show exactly how far left that the Democratic Party has drifted on yeah, with respect good, to Israel. That's a good point. Sean, it's good to see you. Thanks so much. Sean Spicer there coming up.